Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Washington. The last couple of days, a lot of people that follow economics and the blogs have been talking about a piece by Nuriel Rabini. He runs a research think tank in New York and also teaches at NYU. And he's one of the people generally acknowledged to have predicted the 2008 crash. He's certainly been acknowledged also as someone who generally believes in markets and capitalism. Well, here's what he wrote just a few days ago. So Karl Marx, it seems, was partly right in arguing that globalization, financial intermediation run amok, and redistribution of income and wealth from labor to capital could lead capitalism to self-destruct, in brackets, he says, though his view that socialism would be better has been proven wrong. Firms are cutting jobs because there's not enough final demand, but cutting jobs reduces labor income, increases inequality, and reduces final demand. Recent popular demonstrations from the Middle East to Israel to the UK and rising popular anger in China and soon enough in other advanced economies and emerging markets are all driven by the same issues and tensions, growing inequality, poverty, unemployment and hopelessness. Even the world's middle classes are feeling the squeeze of falling incomes and opportunities. The title of that blog is, Is Capitalism Doomed? Now joining us to talk about this blog and the state of the global economy is Jerry Epstein. He's co-director of the Perry Institute in Amherst, Massachusetts. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Paul. So what do you, what do you think? Is, uh, ca is capitalism going to destroy itself, which is part of what Rubini says? Well, things aren't looking too great. I agree with Rubini on that. Um, of course, he, he uh, used Marx's name for shock value and to get attention, and it's worked. Uh, Marx, of course, wasn't the only one who uh, made these, has made these kinds of arguments. He threw in some Keynes and, and Kaletsky as well. But there's no doubt about it. The global economy is in very serious problems, is having very serious problems now. Um, and some of the ones that Rubini pointed out. There has been this huge shift of power and wealth away from the w working class and the middle class in many parts of the world. And this, uh, along with the financial uh, shenanigans and financial crisis, has led to a very serious uh, aggregate demand problem. No, there's no set of uh, institutions or agents uh, in the United States and Europe and in other economies uh, that um, has the ability and the uh, interest in spending money, spending income to revive the economy. And the only possible groups that could do this at this point are governments uh, and central banks. And the right wing forces in Europe and uh, here in the United States are doing their best to make sure that the government and the central banks uh, cannot bring the global account economy out of this stagnation and out of this crisis. So I, things are looking pretty bad. I'm not sure how you define right wing because right now, you know, if you, if you divide the elite between the liberal neoliberals and the conservatives or the right left of what I would say the right left of the elite, uh, they're all on the austerity train. Uh, it's a very few voices, uh, elite voices, that are talking about uh, stimulus and jobs. I shouldn't say none, because in the financial pages, you do see even some uh, investment fund managers saying it needs to be done. But they seem to be very lonely voices. Well, they're pretty lonely voices, and I think that's, it's good that people like Rubini are, are uh, coming out and, and making the argument for, for, uh, to get rid of the austerity uh, push that's coming from so many quarters. Uh, the fact of the matter is, though, uh, with Europe uh, unable and unwilling to um, play an expansionary role, with Obama caving in to the Wall Street forces and the right-wing forces here in the United States, with Japan continuing to be mired in uh, uh, financial and economic and political problems, China's even uh, cutting back um, on its uh, demand policies. Uh, and its economic growth, it doesn't seem like there's any place in the world economy that is, is willing to play uh, an ex expansionary role. Of course, there are plenty of uh, places, including the United States, uh, the Europeans, uh, that could be playing their role, but they're uh, uh, refusing to do that. I mean, when, you know, Rubini quotes Marx, but he doesn't really fully quote Marx. Because Marx didn't make, his main point wasn't inequality and, and distribution of income. If I understand it correctly, it was more that this is the outgrowth of when you have, you know, a tiny percentile actually owning the commanding heights of the economy. It's, it's you know, it's, it's about who owns the stuff 
and then the rest falls out of that. And, and very few people want to talk about that, about that whole issue of, of, of ownership because out of you know, concentration of ownership, we've all seen what has happened in terms of financial regulation. The political power that derives from such ownership makes any kind of policy, even rational policy that kind of mitigates what's happening in terms of the crisis, it makes even that impossible. That's right. Um, you know, uh, the, the top 1% in the United States has gotten uh, most of the gains of, of the economic growth in the last 30 years, and they've gotten uh, accumulated more and more uh, political power as well. And uh, Marx said that when you had uh, a system that's, that's run by a very small uh, group of capitalists and that's impoverishing the rest of uh, the economy, uh, the economy is ripe for uh, a, a, a revolution. Unfortunately, what we're seeing in this country is that it's the right-wing populists that are taking political advantage of this, uh, partly funded by you know, the Koch brothers and other uh, fabulously wealthy um, business people, uh, supported by most of the media. So rather than uh, the, the workers and the middle class organizing on a progressive or left program, as Marx thought would happen, to, to overthrow the system, uh, what we're finding is that it's the right wing that's mobilized. Of course, Rubini said that uh, socialism isn't an alternative because it was proven to be wrong, and uh, that's certainly not the case. Uh, we, don't, we didn't have widespread socialism in, in, in wealthy countries like the United States. But even if it were true, um, as uh, Eric Hobsbawm has written time and time again, it was the threat of socialism and the threat of communism as a viable alternative that forced capitalism to reform, that forced capitalism to redistribute income and wealth. In other words, the New Deal you're talking about, and, and, and European programs like it. And not only in the New Deal, as a result of the Cold War and the threat of the Soviet Union. And uh, this is probably the first time in the history of capitalism where there hasn't been a strong, viable uh, um, threat from the left in, in the, the major capitalist countries. So of course, uh, left-wing parties have gained important uh, power in, in, in some developing countries in Latin America and elsewhere. But um, I think the real cha challenge facing us is, is how we can mobilize the middle class and the working class um, from a progressive direction to really challenge this system as Marx thought would happen. So let, let me ask again, how dangerous a moment do you think we are in? Like if you listen to Rubini, it sounds like we're on the precipice of another 1930s. I think it's a very dangerous moment because um, I think we're in a moment where uh, the uh, forces of austerity have gained the upper hand. And as in the 1930s, that's exactly what happened. The forces of austerity gained the upper hand in Europe. Uh, they gained the upper hand um, uh, uh, by 1937 uh, also in the United States. And in that situation, the f with the debt overhang facing the private and the public uh, financial markets, um, there's no source of expansionary uh, pressure in the global economy. And uh, in that situation, it leads to dis political disintegration, economic disintegration. So I think the danger is very, is very real. And unless there's some leaders, or if they're pushed from the bottom, as I suggested before, to take an expansionary stand, redistribute income and wealth to those at the bottom and in the middle, um, I, I think that we're in for at least very, significant stagnation, if not um, an, uh, a very serious economic crisis. Thanks for joining us, Jerry. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.